Oh, no, you did, Delaney. <laughs> oh, yes, I did, Delaney. <laughs> oh, no, you did, Delaney. Um, okay, pasta time. All right, today I'm making one of my all-time favorite dishes. It combines two of my all-time favorite things, which is pasta and beans. And this is one of the dishes that my mom made. So recently I was um, digging around in this old book, uh, Bugiali on Pasta, which is not where the recipe for this pasta fagioli comes from, except I was flipping through it and I found inside handwritten notes that I took when I was in college. And I was uh, this was from a phone call uh, home to my mom saying, how do you make pasta fagioli? So this is that recipe, which is her recipe, which is now your recipe. There are three most important things that go into the soup are your sofrito, which is the vegetable foundation for the soup, which in this case is carrot and leek and garlic. And it's not just the ingredients, but the way that you get your sofrito to the right end point that's important. And then the other elements are the cooking the beans, cooking the pasta and bringing it all together. So I'm gonna start with, you always start with your sofrito and different cultures have different things that they put in their sofrito. They generally always have a carrot, an onion or a leek. In this case, it's a leek and always um, garlic. And another thing that I like to do is I just blitz all of these vegetables. The only thing that I'll do separately is just drop the garlic in and get that started. A lot of people when they talk to me about making soup, complain that their soup is bland and they can't figure out how to get more flavor into it. And I really do think that the key to a super flavorful soup, super flavorful soup, is starting with the sofrito and really cooking it for a long time. So it's not like a quick saute of vegetables that you would do for a stir fry or if you were doing fried rice or something like that. So I'm just gonna blitz these more so they're finely chopped, more surface area, they kind of dissolve. So I don't want this to go all the way to a puree because then it would be too wet and it'll burn and um, it won't have any integrity left. So this is just really finely chopped vegetables. And this looks like an enormous amount, and that's kind of the point. It's gonna cook down so much, it's voluminous um, on purpose. Okay. Yeah, if you don't like carrots. Who doesn't like carrots? People don't like celery. I think every, no one really has a problem with carrots. I think that's a made up thing. So that was a third of a cup of extra virgin olive oil. Really, this doesn't have to be super hot. I don't want it to get a ton of color at the beginning. So I'm adding all of the veg at once. And I'm gonna season this right off the bat um, with salt and pepper. This is the foundation for the soup and it cooks for a good amount of time, but it's very um, hands off what's happening in the pot. And the important part is to kind of go low and slow at the beginning both the leeks and the carrots have a lot of liquid in them, and I want all of that liquid to sweat out before the vegetables take on any color. And you need a good amount of fat to get that process going. And it's gonna look like not much is happening, and again, that's, that's kind of the point. I'm gonna turn up the heat just a little bit. It should look juicy in the bottom of the pan, but if anything feels like it's going very fast or sizzling, um, high or the vegetables are getting browned, then that would be a good indication to lower the heat. So that takes a while. It takes about 15, 20, 25 minutes to cook that down to where I want to keep going. I'm just gonna cover them back up. They're gonna take a little, little cozy nap under there. You're not gonna believe me. That amazing mound of sofrito, after about 15 minutes, will cook down to something that looks like you didn't even start with anything. And at this point, my mom would always add a ham hock to the pot or whatever. Sometimes it was bacon, sometimes it was pancetta. All of those things would work. If you are a vegetarian and you don't want to add any meat products, that's fine too. I would add a little bit more fat to the pan. And this is gonna cook in the soup the whole time, but I like to give it just a tiny bit of a head start to start um, rendering some of the fat out of the ham hock. One of the things I like about using a ham hock is that it's gonna add richness. You don't get a ton of meat off of it, so it's not really about that, 
but I do like that smoky flavor and the saltiness that it gives to the to the soup. Once that's gone for a couple of minutes, just to feel like the ham hock has gotten warmed up, I'm gonna add the rest of ingredients um, that go into the soup. So the fagioli or the fazool, um, we always use white beans. I soaked these beans overnight. These are cannellinis, which um, soaking just helps the bean cook more evenly. It helps it cook more quickly. Okay, what else is going in here? This was a 15 ounce can of tomatoes. You can use fresh tomatoes if you have them. I don't like biting into a big piece of tomato at the end of the day. Ooh, we're getting the rind um, or the stemmy part. So I'm just gonna tear these. You can use canned crushed tomatoes too. Just make sure that the brand that you're using doesn't have tomato concentrate or a lot of puree in the ingredients um, because that will um, just thicken the soup a little bit too much and it won't have that this kind of nice tomatoey but light um, brothy texture. So comes out to like six tomatoes with their liquid. So if you have a bigger can, you can also just um, scoop out a couple of cups and then start from there. And this is the tomato liquid. So the next thing that's going in, this is one um, bunch of kale, just stripped. Um, you can tear them into smaller pieces. You can leave them in big pieces. The soup is gonna cook for at least an hour and maybe three, a uh, couple of bay leaves. So obviously this doesn't look like soup. It looks like a mound of kale. I'm gonna stir it around a little bit, but depending on how much liquid you had with your beans, um, you're definitely gonna need to add more. We wanna make sure that the beans are submerged in liquid. I'll use stock plus whatever water is laying around. There's a lot of flavor in the beans and in all of the veg. We happen to have stock today because we're in the test kitchen. Um, so I'm just gonna add whatever it takes to cover the beans by a couple of inches. Yeah, so all in all, I added about 10 cups of liquid. This is about to come to a boil. Wanna make sure everybody is saving their Parmesan rinds. When you grate down to the bottom of your parm or to your grana padano or even your pecorino, don't throw the rind away. You throw this into the guy. And especially if you're not using the ham hock because you're a vegetarian, um, that parm rind is going to lend an insane amount of flavor, saltiness, a little bit of richness, umami. You know that word, guys, the umami. This could take an hour or it could take three. The end point for the soup is when the beans are totally tender and creamy. You don't want an al dente bean. You definitely want al dente noodles. And um, you want it to have a little bit low simmer. I usually set it up with the lid askew. And if the liquid reduces um, so that the beans are out there in the open air getting exposed, top it off again, use water, no big deal, but just make sure that they stay submerged, otherwise they'll dry out and get crunchy and your soup will over-reduce and be pasty. You don't want that. So just do, it, do its thing, take its time, quiet, it's quiet time now. Um, all right, it's been a couple of hours. The next thing to do is to cook the pasta, but you don't wanna cook the pasta until you know that your soup is ready. And along the way, while we were checking to make sure that the beans were sub submerged and there was enough liquid in the soup, coming around, tasting the soup, checking the soup, seasoning the soup as you go. But if you're ready for dinner, the next thing to do is to cook the pasta. So I know that a lot of people are gonna say, why couldn't I just put the pasta into the soup? This is like a lot of liquid and it's boiling and now I have a separate pot and I gotta do the thing, and why are you making me do that? If you cook the pasta in the soup, it is going to absorb all of that available liquid. So all of this like delicious broth that you've created that you actually wanna spoon into when you're eating, the pasta, the noodles, the dried noodles, is gonna absorb all of that. And then in return, freaking pasta is gonna give back to the soup starchiness and gumminess. So you're gonna end up with a gummy noodle and a thick kind of pasty soup, and then you're gonna really regret all of the things that you did. So cook the pasta separately. Growing up, it was always ditalini, so that's what I'm using. 
but any like small little shape. Um, so even a small shell or elbows. So I'm just gonna set a timer for like a few minutes less than the pasta package says. So if it says nine minutes, cook it for six. And then they all come together. Didalini going into the soup. Whatever liquid is clinging to these noodles is totally fine. Um, Cause adding them in here is gonna add a little bit of starch anyway. It's not as much pasta as you would cook if you were cooking pasta for dinner, obviously, because there's so many other things going on in the soup. Look at what happened to the Parmesan rind. Look at this floppy thing. There's your parm rind. You don't really wanna eat this, so I would definitely take that out. The ham hock really gave up all of its love as well. So this is what the ham hock looks like. And you can just take those, whatever pieces of meat and kind of scrape them off the bone. Um, you can take the meat off the bone and kind of cut it into smaller pieces. I'm just really just shredding it apart right into the pot because it is absolutely falling apart. Tender, let's get the bone out of there. All right, so we're actually gonna have pasta fagioli for lunch today in the test kitchen. We got Carol's recipe for pasta fagioli. Oof, that looks good. All right, so you've also got bay leaves, unless you give out prizes for whoever ends up with the bay leaf in your soup, you might wanna get rid of that too. There's always a little extra cheese to grate over when you get to the table. This is Parmesan, because I need to, um, I'm really just in it to get back down to that rind, you know? A little red pepper flake, if you're into that kind of thing. I'm gonna add a tiny bit of salt. I like a lot of black pepper. Obviously this is my serving, so I get what I want. Extra drizzle of olive oil, which my mom was really the first person to ever show me that that was a thing. And it was something that it really does change the flavor of the soup. And that's why we always call for extra virgin because you want to use something that tastes delicious. And then obviously if you have pasta and beans and all of this other richness, then you'd need more bread. The one thing I need that I don't have is a spoon. I mean, now that's a spoon. Oh, it looks delicious. For me, I'm just chasing that feeling that the soup that I'm eating is the one that my mom made for us, which is where the inspiration for this came in the, from the beginning. So if I can make it taste like hers, then I feel like um, I nailed it. And it's pretty close. It's really good. It's a good prize for somebody who bought the bay leaf. Oh, first peck of dessert for the bay leaf. Get to skip your shower. <laughs> that only applies to small humans who are constantly trying to get out of bathing. I feel like when you become an adult, you're not like looking for reasons not to be. I love, anyway, 